But Tanya hadn't really died that day, because Tanya didn't exist. Tanya Hughes was not always Tanya Hughes. When she tragically passed away in 1990, the authorities uncovered far more than they expected. After years of running with her fugitive stepfather turned captor, her story was now finally uncovered. Now being told in the Netflix documentary, The Girl in the Picture, people are calling it one of the most frightening things they have ever watched. With her being so close to being saved so many times, she was just too deep into it to get out. When she passed, she left behind a son, a husband, and one big mystery that needed to be solved. Who was Tanya Hughes and what did they uncover about her after passing? Today we're talking about Tanya Hughes, tomorrow you decide. Give this video a like, subscribe to the channel and comment below who you want to see next time on Where Are They Now? Tanya Hughes was just one of the many names that she had gone by over the years of running. She was born as Suzanne Savakis in 1969. She was born to her mother, Sandra Brandenburg, and her first husband, Clifford Savakis. Sandra had three more children after Suzanne, Allison, Amy, and Philip with her second husband. Their childhood seemed to be fairly normal during the time before their mother's third husband, Brandon Williams. Sandra met Brandon Williams at a truck stop in North Carolina in 1974. The two became close fast and after dating for just one month, the two were wed. The only problem with Brandon Williams is that he was actually Franklin Floyd, a wanted fugitive with a pretty extensive history of criminal activity. We did an entire video on Floyd and his story a little while back, so make sure to check that out if you haven't already for the full story on Franklin's past. Without Sandra knowing anything about him, she just thought she had found a nice man to help her care for her four young children. After they were wed, he convinced her to move with him to Dallas, Texas. She agreed and the family took off. One day, Sandra was off at the store doing some shopping. She paid for her things with a bad check and was made to serve 30 days in jail. She served her time with the kids in the care of her new husband, Brandon Williams, or Franklin Floyd, and when she returned, they were all gone. Over the 30 days she was in prison, her husband took all four children and ran. He put Suzanne's younger sisters in a home, had her baby Philip privately adopted, and kept Suzanne with him. Sandra tried to go to authorities, but due to her being married to Floyd, they told her he was allowed to take them. With her siblings out of the way, he decided to take Suzanne to Oklahoma and raise her as his own daughter. Franklin changed his name again from Brandon Williams to Trenton Davis. He gave a number of inconsistent statements regarding how she came to be in his custody, one being that he rescued her when she was abandoned by her biological parents. The earliest known record of Suzanne was her elementary school registration in an Oklahoma City school in 1975 under the alias Suzanne Davis. Even though at school Suzanne was excelling in her studies and coming across as a pretty happy girl, there was a lot of inappropriate behavior going on at home from her so-called father. I know he wasn't actually biologically her father, but it's still so sick, and people that they met had no reason to believe that they weren't related. She kept face in public. There were some instances when people would notice the odd relationship and behavior between her and her father, but Floyd always had a solution for that, move away. It blows my mind that he actually enrolled her into school and would allow her to have so much time away from him. They were hiding in plain sight. They moved to Georgia in her freshman year of high school and they stayed until she graduated from a school in Forest Park in 1986. They changed their names again for the move, Floyd now going by Warren Marshall and Suzanne Sharon Marshall. She was still doing really well in school, specifically she loved science and had dreams of working for NASA. She even received a full ride scholarship to Georgia Tech to study aerospace engineering. I so wish I could say that she made it, but unfortunately her scholarship was revoked due to her becoming pregnant. They never confirmed who the father was, but I think it's safe to assume Franklin Floyd had a hand in that too to prevent her from attending school. They then moved around for a bit again before settling in Tampa, Florida in 1988. By this time, Suzanne, or Sharon Marshall, was 18 and pregnant again with her second child. This time, we know the father was not Franklin Floyd, but he was not in the picture. Suzanne was able to keep this child, who she named Michael, and raised with Floyd. She absolutely fell in love with Michael and had a close relationship with him despite the conditions they were living in. Floyd made her work as an exotic dancer to be the sole provider for the three of them. They had changed their names once again, this time Floyd going by Clarence Hughes, and Suzanne went from Sharon Marshall to Tanya Tadlock. Why this time would she have a different last name than her supposed father, you may be wondering. Well, at some point in this timeline, Floyd got the idea that he no longer wanted Suzanne to be his daughter. Oh no, he wanted her to be his wife. 
They were married in 1989 in New Orleans. How did they obtain a legal marriage license, you may ask? I wish I knew, but somehow Floyd made it happen. So she was now Tanya Hughes, and this would be the last time they changed their names. She'd become pregnant for a third time, this time giving the child up through private adoption so Floyd could get some money. They moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and there she continued to work as a dancer at a club. Suzanne had become good friends with some of her coworkers, and after seeing the way that Floyd treated his now wife, they encouraged her to leave. But Tanya was too scared to leave in fear for her and her son's lives. Floyd had even joined the Fraternal Order of Police, despite not being a police officer. Again, how? Wish I knew. He then threatened to use his connections to track down Suzanne and Michael if she tried to leave him. In 1990, Suzanne, however, began secretly seeing a man named Kevin Brown. He promised to take care of her and Michael, and in April of that year, she was ready to run away with him and get out of the twisted world she'd been living in for about 15 years at this point. I really wish she had been able to run away and start a life with Kevin and Michael. However, Floyd must have found out because shortly before her 21st birthday, after she had just picked up groceries, she was struck by a car and found on the side of the road in severe condition. They were never able to confirm who the driver was, but I have reason to believe it was Floyd because every time she was about to have something good, he swooped in and ruined it. She survived the impact but went into a coma. While at the hospital, she was actually doing quite well. She had been steady and on the road to recovery. The doctors found Floyd's behavior odd. He did not seem excited or happy to see that his wife was alive and recovering after such a tragic accident. He claimed that he had fallen asleep at the motel while she had been out to get groceries. Okay, Franklin. While Suzanne was in the hospital, her friends from work were concerned for her safety. They knew a bit about Floyd's controlling behavior and they tried so hard to get doctors to not let him be alone with her. They even tried to alert the authorities, but since there was no evidence, nothing could be done. Suzanne passed away in the hospital not long after. Hospital staff was shocked and surprised because she was doing so well and was thought to recover. It just so happens that the evening before she passed, Floyd had been in to visit her and the two of them were left alone. I don't know what or how he did it, but I just know he was the one to finally end it. She was just 20 years old and had been with Floyd her whole life. Floyd also had taken out two life insurance policies on Suzanne just before she passed away. How convenient for him. After her death, Floyd took Michael and the two ran. Franklin Floyd was still a wanted fugitive at this time for almost 20 years at this point, and that was the least of his crimes. So he had to keep running. While he was running this time, he made a big oopsie. When collecting the life insurance claims he took out on Tanya Hughes' life, he used none other than the social security number that was connected to his original name, Franklin Floyd, the wanted criminal, not Tanya Hughes' husband, Clarence. He was caught, which was great, but the authorities had no idea what had gone on all those years. All they knew was about his original offense and that he'd been running and hiding for so long. He was charged for only what they knew about at the time and was sentenced to 33 months. While there, he tried to fight for custody of her son, Michael, but paternity tests revealed that Floyd was not Michael's father. Michael was adopted into a loving family. He was enrolled into school and began attending Meridian Elementary School in Choctaw, Oklahoma in 1994. After Floyd was released from prison, he tried to get custody of Michael again, but was denied due to him being a criminal and not biologically related to Michael. Franklin was determined though because he ended up sneaking into Michael's school, held the principal at gunpoint, took Michael and the principal away in his car, tied the principal to a tree, and drove off with Michael. Finally, two months later, Floyd was caught, no Michael to be found. Floyd was arrested and he would go on to keep what actually happened to Michael and Suzanne to himself for years. So where are they now? After finding him following his taking Michael from school, the authorities uncovered so much more than they expected. They discovered through photos that Tanya Hughes was actually Sharon Miller, who was also Suzanne Davis, who started as Suzanne Svakis. Floyd was never charged with the death of Suzanne due to lack of evidence, but he was sentenced to 52 years and placed on death row for taking Michael and the death of another young woman they also discovered through his photos. They searched and searched for Michael's remains for a long time, but they were never found. Floyd did eventually admit to taking his but has still never said anything about Suzanne. Suzanne's brother, Philip, who had been adopted and presumed to be dead by his unknown mother, was found in 2019 through DNA testing. Franklin Floyd is now 79 years old and still on death row in Florida. Through hours of conversation with Floyd in jail, he eventually revealed everything about Michael, but still keeps what happened to Suzanne in the end to himself. 
Tanya Hughes or Suvance Vegas would have been 53 years old today, Michael would have been 33. Her birth parents were eventually tracked down and given some closure. It took them 24 years to discover her true identity. The story is such a sad one. Suzanne was so close so many times to being free from Floyd, but eventually she just couldn't get out. You can see the entire story unfold in the Netflix documentary, The Girl in the Picture, which is out now. Do you think Floyd could have been caught sooner? Why did so many people let down poor Suzanne? Have you seen the documentary? Let me know all your thoughts on Tanya Hughes or Savannah Savakis and this wild case in the comments below. Thank you for joining me today. I have been your host, Maddie. Give this video a like, subscribe to the channel for more, and comment below who you want to see next time on Where Are They Now?